Hello, and welcome to the much-awaited, highly mythical, absolute legendary Days Gone Spoiler Timely. Cast. Timely. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot that one. Days Gone Spoiler Cast. It is delightful to have you with us uh, to talk about such an important game that came out this year that needs some further discussion, even if maybe... I, I feel like now's the perfect time because people have had enough time to really soak in the game storytelling and uh, environment and all, 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 all of that sort of stuff to get a more nuanced opinion and time to express themselves. Uh, we have with us Bob from uh, Gig Boots. Hey, Bob. I'm excited to hear more about the story of Deacon Days Gone. Yes, Deacon Days Gone's a great man. Don't you think so? KZ Excellent from KZExcellent.com. Hashtag Freaker Gang! <laughs> And Mr. Feel from Mr. Feel's Wild Ride. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the guy who played the game the least, Mr. Feel. <laughs> Fuck you. What? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna this have to. This was side, your idea, I, Feel. I'm gonna have to side with Feel here. <laughs> Fuck you, Casey. I've done nothing wrong <laughs> except not play the game for even a minute. What? What are you talking about? I've played it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. What's uh? Let me look at your trophy list real quick. I'm sure it'll reflect that. Oh, shit. (laughs) I haven't synced. KZ, did you even... He plays offline. Did you even buy the game? Good liar, Tech. No, he did. That's the only thing that makes this feel good is that he's out $60 because he bought it digitally because he doesn't like to leave the house. Now, for those who don't keep up with our podcast shenanigans... I I have trophies. It's kind of the MCU of podcasts. There's a lot of lore to catch up on. Um, I originally said I was excited to play Days Gone for the podcast so I could report on a game that looked like it was going to be a little rough. And then KZ very excitedly said, hey, we should, I'm going to play it too. We should all play it was his next assertion. Feel, go buy it so we could do a spoiler cast. Unfortunately, Dan's premonition, Dan's gamer premonition that it would be 15 hours long was incorrect, and it's actually uh, the longest game ever made by a human. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Uh, Bob, I, I think, think doing basically no optional content, I, it, it took me like 55 hours. Yeah, I got about 21 hours in. They're about 18 to 21 uh, between me, Bob, and Jim Ratgazer just playing the game um it's a long fucking game and i wish my schedule wasn't so busy immediately afterwards like we had castlemania come up so that game came out and we yeah. immediately had to pre-produce content for that theme i was month. barely able to finish my time with it <laughs> yeah you're, you're 15 minutes his none minutes it wasn't 15 minutes my friend <laughs> i got trophies i fought freakers took mm-hmm. down freaker hives mm-hmm uh, it, I actually I, I do think it's unfortunate because this is a weird creature you know this is Sony's first party studio Sony Bend making an open world game on Unreal Engine 4 this late in the gen it's such a weird mix of things that have come together to craft this amazing game Days Gone with it's stilted animations but really high quality models <laughs> 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 making it yep. some weird intergenerational <laughs> mutant. <laughs> yeah, them doing their PS2 animations while they look like that. It's, right it's literally <laughs> the reverse of The Last of Us on PS4. Like, if you watch The Last of Us on PS4, mm-hmm. it's like really, it, we're not talking Last of Us Part 2, we're talking just The Last of Us. It, it has really good animations with last-gen models that look nice-ish. But not that great. This has last gen animations. <laughs> it's 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 really it's really something. Uh, many people have described Days Gone in this group and in this podcasting group as uh, doing what Ubisoft does of making a giant world full of shit to do that maybe isn't exceptional, but you know th- it's not that bad of a game. Um, it's better. I found it more pal- palatable than most Ubisoft games. It isn't really an Ubisoft game. I was surprised. I really expected there to be like dozens of absolutely identical things that you fill through a checklist, but there really isn't that much of that. Yeah, I never. Yeah, I, I mean, enjoyed my time with it for the most part, which yeah, I didn't expect. There, there's 
clearing out the nests, which is the closest thing I think to that, where it's one mission. There's type. clearing out the nests, but 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 you have to do that. You have to do the clearing out the nests. In my time with the game, I never you, had to. I just had to drive hella fast. <laughs> You cannot fast travel through an area full of nests. Well, yeah. If your route goes through one, it won't let you fast travel. Oh, yeah. Yep. I, we didn't use fast travel because it takes forever to load. Fast travel takes over a minute I've to load. That's unreal for you. Yeah, and that's something I'm looking forward to next gen, the yeah. solid state drives to help alleviate should, Unreal uh, we, Engine we should, 4s. We should score this game. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's, what, <laughs> that's what this podcast is for. That's what we've done. As on. you all know, ladies and gentlemen, we score this like Famitsu, where we each we each rate it 1 to 10, no decimals. A perfect game will get a 40. I think this one's a shoe in for a 38. How do you get a, a what are these, 1 out of 10 freakers? I, yeah, I don't th uh, we're each it's rating just it. just 1 out of 10. Um, I don't know why we keep adding, I don't know why we keep adding a new metric to, as a bit. We didn't do that for DMC5. It's like flavor. It's it's not like some required thing. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and say this game. People need to understand my 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 review scale. I use the whole scale. Okay, I'm not IGN. The scores do not start at uh -huh. seven if the game is palatable. <laughs> it starts somewhere around five, where I go. Yeah, if I was an alcoholic, I might play this game for twenty hours at a five, but. This game is a little bit better than a Ubisoft game, in my opinion, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7. This, this game feels like a really strong 7 to me. It seems like a game where if you ran out of games and you don't value your life, you could really enjoy Days Gone. Can I go second? Absolutely, Mr. Feel. As the person who played it the most, okay. you can. I'm going to give it a 5. <laughs> and that's where, like, I if the, if you completely took out the story, if you completely surgically removed the entire story of this game, and also gave it like three months more of QA, I'd give it an eight. But the story is so fucking intolerably bad. Dan, it it nose dives at like the set end of the second act harder than I've ever seen a story nose dive. It's unreal. And this is why Mr. Field pushed so hard that we need this spoiler cast. I, I, I have to be able to fucking talk about this. It, or it'll kill die. me if I never get to get never had got to get this out. We can't but let also, Mr. Field die. The game falls apart more and more as te on a technical level the further yeah. you get. I have no idea if it has like the Bloodborne glitch from when Bloodborne came out where if you played it too long the bosses would stop working because of a like, memory leak. Like a memory, yeah, oh, memory yeah. leak. But like, by the end of that game, I would fast travel, I'd get the loading screen, I'd spawn in, and it would lock for so long I thought it fucking crashed. Yeah. Fast travel like was added 30 to 40 second. seconds. <laughs> fast travel may have been added in the last second. Hmm, I don't know. Not only that, um, like there are mo in the in the third act, there were multiple points where like, this area didn't load, so uh, none of the, the none of the geometry does not have textures or collision. Huh. Wow! Oh, look! Here's a screenshot of a dog standing in the middle of the air, thirty feet away from a cliff, just having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> look at that dog go! Look at that pupper! In fact, I think I, I think I still have that screenshot. If they polished this game. First of all, if they fixed the gameplay loop, because it isn't, it, it has things about it I don't like. If they fixed the gameplay loop and, like, shot whoever rode it into space with a cannon mm -hmm. and weren't forced to release it unfinished because of The Last of Us 2, which then got delayed at the last minute, or moved at the last minute, not delayed, yeah. moved at the last minute, so they released their game broken for nothing. Yeah. This game has a really good map. Yeah. Like the areas are really nice and varied in their geography and memorable, which is a problem that a lot of games have. Yeah. A lot. Like they just like no. If it isn't a Rockstar game, I never feel like I learned the map. I feel like I was able to learn Infamous 1's map by the end of the game, but Infamous 2, it just didn't really stick. Uh, I kind of was like, okay, where where are the swamps? I don't even fucking remember. Shit. <laughs> like, that city didn't have enough variety God. with the islands. Look at that pupper! <laughs> You're looking at the picture now? 
Yes, it's in. It's in <laughs> 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 that is a fucking awesome looking N64 game you've got loaded there. <laughs> Damn, son. Hey, only one more ambush camp, and once you defeat all of them, the textures will come back. Did Turok team up with you with this one? <laughs> Who died um, on the very first QTE in the game? I didn't. I can't remember the QT the first QTE. I did. I'm going to use another wrong. screenshot to illustrate why. I hope Dan puts it in the video for this podcast. Yeah, I'm marking it. I'm marking it. Um, yeah, we're putting it in the right place. Where's the QTE prompt in that image? <laughs> oh my fucking Christ! <laughs> it's on his neck. <laughs> no, no, actually, incorrect, Bob. Below, you failed. Below Deacon Day's gone chin. Oh, There's there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, where's Waldo? Video games right here. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Holy shit! I think I think you rated this too low. <laughs> I'm also going to post a screenshot of the of the menu because I never failed to laugh looking at it. Oh, don't, don't, not with the abbreviated stree in map skless. Yeah, no, the, the, the map, or everything about the menu was bad. I just learned graphic design, I guess. It was... Okay, that, that was my review. It's, I five, it's 5 out of 10. I can't remember okay. that being like that, that menu thing. <laughs> I don't remember it saying skless. <laughs> Strive. 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 <laughs> Jesus fuck They can't afford to have even one more letter <laughs> I mean you heard how the PS4 fan Ramped up insanely Anytime you pulled up that menu Yeah I can believe it, one more letter would make my PS4 Overheat <laughs> It was on a A splash screen mm -hmm. And it was It is the loudest game I've ever played So let me explain uh, menus in Unreal Engine 4 uh, apparently to make them feel better than like menus used to feel in like uh, say Borderlands 2 or whatever um, they run at a higher frame rate than the rest of the game they're 60 uh, so every game that does that like Bloodstained uh, Ritual of the Night also does this the fan ramps up insanely <laughs> it's like man this seems backwards <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Holy God. Uh, Bob, what is what is your score? Bob, how much I, time did you play? I, I, Let's we, preempt we, the score with this. We kind of had a shared play session, me and Dan. I, yeah. I played some of it. He played some of it. Uh, we probably... I probably had about 10 hours of yeah. my hands on the controller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I saw more than that. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to have to... I, I, I'm I'm sitting there between four and five. I'm probably just going. I'm going to give it a five. I'm going to give it the, that benefit of the doubt of mm -hmm. doing more of it wouldn't be that bad. Yeah, but I did not like the game's okay, kind of. Yeah, like the, that's the feeling I get of. from moments. Let, let me explain. If this game came out last gen, <laughs> it would have been one of the greatest games of the generation. It would fit right in. <laughs> yeah, it, it would, would have been fit. the best at what last gen was going for. Like. <sighs> I yeah. just the the tasks that you did have to repeat were just kind of frustrating. All How the gasoline stuff was just in this gen. What it's Sony? It must have been approved like five years ago. I mean, yes, yeah, yeah one. It, it literally it was. It, whenever they wrapped on uh, Uncharted: Golden Abyss, I don't. They actually had a team, if I remember correctly, doing pre-production on this before they even wrapped on that. Um, I guess that would explain it because it feels. It's got that archaic feel and and a level of uninterestingness. Here's the thing. Uh, everyone can say I'm a dumbass or whatever, you know. But usually when I have these feelings, shit like this ends up being the case and people admit to it like way later. Okay? Okay. And I haven't watched any postmortems for this game because chances are they're trying to keep those skeletons in the fucking closet. I think this game had a reboot at some point, like an engine change. Because you can't tell me that Unreal Engine 4 was a viable engine to do anything like this five years ago. That is not true. Unreal Engine 4 barely ran on consoles this gen five years ago. I mean, we know the dev, dev cycle has to be a nightmare. Last year, we saw <laughs> oh my the God, beginning yes. of the game. Yeah, we need to talk about this. And uh, game the Informer. first 40 minutes yeah, were game shown... For, uh, at E3 last year, like right before it, Game Informer got like the exclusive. Actually, like, we're weird. not going to be at E3. We got this. It was February. 
So it gave you the idea that they were really confident they were going to get this out last year because they were showing this unedited gameplay segment 40 minutes long in fucking February. Bob, also, Bob, you know, do you want to the well, fact well, that well, real we quick, have let's, evidence. Uh, Bob, what, yeah, what t- they, let's talk about the differences that they, they literally have a choice system in that. Like, they it's gone. ripped out the morality system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who does that in the last year of development? That's fucking insane in and of itself. I I don't know, what I don't know which option. Wrong? I don't know which option is worse. The option that they just randomly picked what Deacon Days Gone will do for the final game. <laughs> or that there were things he would that there were things they had planned that were worse than the things he does. Uh Ooh. so here's the thing. I think they randomly chose good path, bad path. Uh, to string together some sort of narrative in the game because they realized they didn't design the game in a way where the morality system wouldn't have a wave of consequences for literally everything else. Like, for example, you save a little girl from a village where she's living by herself that is completely overrun by zombies, but she's been fending for herself and living there for, I think it was a year or two. Um, so she was r- relatively fine. Don't forget, Dad, when Dan, whenever you pause the game, you get to see how many days gone. <laughs> I I thought that was a, a neat touch. Yeah, that was clever. That was the most clever thing in this game. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you're right. Actually, <laughs> I'm like, oh, that that works with the title too, and a good way to like track the passage of time. But like, what did you do when you were this many days gone? I uh, I think it's insane to rip out an entire morality system in the last year of development. Because as I said, they showed it in February. It shipped the next Mar April. It got pushed into April. That's a sign a game is really slipping. That because that has nobody an anthem like energy when they're like <laughs> fucking. We made this shit up and you saw it for the first time at E three. We yeah. figured out we were gonna do this. I don't think any game has ever intentionally shipped in April. April's usually the deadest month. Yeah. May is usually bustling. You know, got a war shipped in April. Yeah. Okay. It's starting to change. Is that a Sony Like later on this gen where the start of the year is starting to push stuff. I think that's a Sony All the rules went out the window this gen. Like it used to be that January was a dead zone and now it's like a death, like a death battle. Yeah. It's a battle royale of games. Um, Sony's also been using like that early point in the year to be, to not have to put something out in the fall. Yeah. Or at least they were for a little bit there, because they're like, whatever, our third parties, that's what people are paying attention to. And so here's the thing. Here's here's what I think. Uh, Death Stranding was the one chosen to ship at the end of this year over The Last of Us 2, because additional polish on The Last of Us Part 2 is neat. And if they announce mm-hmm. the PS5 and show off some stuff early next year, which I think it'll be neck and neck with when that game comes out, just like The Last of Us Part 1, it wasn't called Part 1, just like The Last of Us 1, they... No one's going to be sitting there and be like, well, I don't want to play this because I saw a prettier game. Meanwhile, I don't know. I feel like I feel like it. you need a game that has enough hype going for it by itself where it will sell, even though the next consoles are on the horizon. And The Last of Us Part 2 has that more so than Death Stranding. But, yeah, but that's not about Days Gone. So I'll shut the fuck up <laughs> that it's it's more of a core first party title too. You're, you're sounding very publisher right now. <laughs> well, when, when you're thinking about it, it's like the one thing that's getting uh, saved for last almost. Yeah. Aside from like Tsushima being the last of us kind of makes sense as I don't know. There's there's still like weird communication on whether or not the Death Stranding is only a Sony thing. Is that a thing? There's a lot of language about console exclusive when this thing first began. But I don't know if that changed when they settled on using Decima for that. Um. I don't remember reading anything that said console exclusive. I read a bunch of stuff. Where I, just, it said Sony I remember was seeing a lot of people say they haven't confirmed it's not. <laughs> and the way okay. there, there's a language of like, you, it's going to arrive first here on PS4. You have crazy people you follow, <laughs> right? I'm like, it's yeah, being uh, paid I do a podcast Sony. with at least one of them. But it's completely unrelated to this, though. I don't know what you're talking Casey, about. Casey, can you score the game? I need to be able to take my fucking limiters off. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> Without doing the bit, I played like nine hours of this. I was gonna pretend I played like one, but I did nine hours. Yeah, I went. Sto- I actually went and checked your uh, trophies. I was like, oh, he got <laughs> you, a little bit into the game. 
<laughs> this story utterly repulsed me and was one of the most unappealing narrative Guess what? games I've, I have ever so played. so much fucking worse. I watched streams of later parts of it. I went, this gameplay loop is not that appealing to me, but I, like, I am more into Ubisoft games than I am at this, to be, to be quite honest. But it's mainly because I'm so fucking tired of zombie-related stuff. And when I started controlling the motorcycle in this from second one, I went, this doesn't feel right. Uh, like, it, it you know why? Did not, what? Input lag. You have to upgrade the shit out of that my motorcycle to make it feel good. Like, as soon as I did a turn, I'm like, this does not feel right. And I went, isn't the whole, like, all the rumors they before made this it- game got announced were that it was originally going to be called Dead Don't Ride? So the fact that the motorcycle <laughs> zombie game, by the way, that's, that's fucking nuts. The motorcycle <laughs> zombie game doesn't game control name. good. Yeah, it was really bad. The, the they, name absolutely, that great they absolutely had to have just taken the bike because about halfway through the game, the bike gets decent to ride. Oh, fuck off halfway through yeah. the game. You said yeah, it's like guess a million what? hours. Yeah, guess what? During story missions, they nerf your bike because somebody is talking to you over the radio yeah. and they didn't know how to make it not te- you not get there too fast for their good conversation. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you it- can go start a mission and your bike is back to controlling like shit and being slow and terrible. I think I need to so lower this my score. Was, this was their version, <laughs> the motorcycle version of walk and talks. Yes. Because you gotta, you gotta, is, you gotta listen to them, listen to them does go nine, off. What? Does nine hours get you any of the flashback missions? Uh, I I think I was about to hit something like that. I went through, I spent a lot of time just screwing around the open world. I got through that first section where the dude gets really fucked up by the, by, by the crazy, like by the rippers that are always capitalized in the fucking rippers by the rippers, like burning his arm. And then, you know, you're using his shotgun, took out some, took out, cleared out some areas, had that thing like this fucking my wife, (laughs) my dead wife. Did you guys know I have a dead wife? I was repulsed by a lot, a large chunk of this game, and I just, I like open world trash, but I couldn't get into this just because it wasn't interesting. I would play a bad Assassin's Creed game every day of the week before I would play this. I'm giving it, um, giving it a four. I'd probably play like the older Assassin's Creed, like four and earlier before this. I don't like. I'd probably I'd play yeah. two before this. That's the only one I really finished. And that's that's kind of how I, I feel. I about enjoy it too. I enjoyed Assassin's Creed games. Like my favorite this, one might be the last one they did before it became RPGs. So I liked Syndicate a lot. It really bothered me that they just gave you the Last of Us's crafting system exactly because it doesn't work in an open world game. Like I don't like how little amounts of shit I can hold when the point should be. Oh, I found like a ruined suburb. I can go through it and find materials, but it has really low caps. And you don't have a storage unit or anything. Well, can't you store like me your bike reels- or something? Nope. No, jeez. You can get upgrades to double the amount you can carry, but it's way deep in the tree. And you can get a upgrade that um puts ammo sacks on your bike, so you can reload from the bike if you have it full of ammo. So um. Now that we've done the uh, reviews, I just wanted to recap some of our recent games that we've uh, we've reviewed. Um, Devil May Cry 5, we gave that a 40. Mm-hmm. Uh, we recently did Bloodstained, that got a 38. Mm-hmm. This got a 21. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and to be to be fair, a third of that is me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another thing that you you were yeah, the one Dan, that Dan's it kindness. The I, g- I gave it a seven. I mildly <laughs> one third of the re- score. <laughs> <laughs> my review history on this show is ten, ten, four. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's the thing for me. I feel like uh, basically any Ubisoft open world game feels worse than this, except for maybe Far Cry. Um. So yeah, this game I, didn't to, feel that terrible. It doesn't feel as bad to engage with I, as Assassin's I Creed because so, of the input I, latency and uh I'm so much more stuff. interested. I'm so much more interested in in those worlds and yeah. what I'm what I'm doing. Oh, Even absolutely. shit like Far Cry New Dawn, which 
is the definition of middling in terms mm-hmm. of story and what you're doing. I'm like, this is a more interesting world. At than least just that game has generic hey, hey, zombies. New Dawn has the Tree of Might. <laughs> it has the Tree of Might. Also, it has a thing called a uh, color. Yeah. Um. This game has color once you get out of uh, the very first area. Once you get it, it days just, gone. It really. F- <laughs> <laughs> Look, it has. It just feels <laughs> like um. It fe- it feels and looks like a last gen game to me. Just the, yeah. the way. I mean, it does. Look, um, that's just how Washington is. <laughs> That's how Washington State is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I found it really refreshing that the most uh the, the the best build was melee because you can build a axe that kills everything in one hit. Yeah. That was it was weird. Yeah. Like the I, guns feel also, so nerfed compared the, to those. Yeah, the guns just feel wrong. They're really underpowered so you engage with the it. The shotguns are the the, uh, the big good shotgun is okay, but it was so weird like there's cover based shooting, but I don't have to do it because I can just march through the bullets and shoot them in the face or hit them with my saw axe. Mm. So, Bob, what's are, up? Are we going to have to take a trip to Washington State to see if the forest is really as boring as this game? <laughs> are we just going to walk around? I mean, I've around been to it? Washington. Yeah, it's it's pretty boring. Oh, shit. Yeah, I, I have a guy who's a pretty good tour guide. I hear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this game having like child freaker seemed kind of tasteless yeah that was very tasteless it was so strange i'm trying to think about the child freaker moment i guess for the was, record there I an should entire have clarified, class of enemy i have not played this game in oh. two months <laughs> right here's a here's like a weird here's a weird not even last gen but ps2 gen thing that i got unlocked it and went what the fuck yeah you get a mind control arrow. <laughs> that, that is definitely like Bioshock. And <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you get a, it, it you get a like bolt for the PS3. crossbow. You get a, cro- a bolt for the crossbow, which, by the way, what the fuck is up with these games and crossbows? Uh, let me explain. The Walking I am, Dead? I am, yes, there. <laughs> Fine, jump to the end of the joke. See oh, if I can. Yeah, that must <laughs> that must be it. Yeah. As I'm about to tell a joke, Casey's like, next chapter. No, cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> two things happen. One, it gets buffed, and two, it aggro's anything that isn't you, unless you're the only thing around. And it created these really interesting situations because if it's if it survives, now you have to fight a buffed enemy. And it created some fun moments where like uh, KZ didn't get to these guys, but there's a big boy version of the Rippers called like called Bra- uh, not Rippers, uh, Freakers called Breakers, and they're like uh, inc- <laughs> they're like in- they're like Incredible Hulk versions of the of the Freakers. <laughs> so I shot him. I shot one of those with uh, the mind control arrow, and it fought a uh, infected bear. Did and I just watched them own Blasters? each other. Uh, no, there's uh, there's Freakers. Breakers Slicers. and there's something else. Yeah, I think it is something like slice. There might only be there might only be the babies and then the breakers. But the, but then animals can get them too. No, they're screamers. Oh my god. Which uh which have like a shriek like the witch in uh what the fuck's that game? Left for Dead. Left for Dead. Yeah, Left for Dead that stun you and uh by the way they fuck up your screen. I, I wish that effect didn't exist because it fucking blinded me every time. And they'll draw other freakers to you. And then there's um, there's like uh, there's one that's in like one mission called Reachers, which are uh, like just <laughs> upgraded like basic ones. This game sucks. <laughs> Why is every one of these names boring? Yeah, it's real. By the way, uh, they capitalize Drifter every every time they say it in the subtitles, and always made me fucking lose it's my mind. By the way. The concept of drifters drifter is fucking bike. stupid. Yeah, uh, that's where. I, thank you, Bob. That's where I was about to go. Why is a bike the like the drifter method of transportation? A bike. Okay, here's the advantages of a motorcycle in a post-apocalyptic situation. It doesn't take as much gas as a car. That's it. You can't carry <laughs> stuff with you. Yeah. You can't carry stuff with you. Yeah. Uh, it can't be shelter. It offers no protection. But it's I ultra no I don't know. working cars in that game. Like that's that is, what I was hearing from a bunch of people is just like it's a world where no one uses a car. 
by the way, this this is nitpicky, but I don't give a fuck. There's all these survivor camps with cars sitting like a hundred feet out of them. Why isn't every single part of that car stripped? Yeah, I don't. Yes, know. that's nitpicky, and I don't care. No, there it's... are multiple missions where they try to explain why freakers make sense. <laughs> did Ugh. you do? Uh, I know, I know, Dan did because he ran into them. But Casey, did you do the missions where you have to stalk the? Uh, FEMA guys. Oh god, that 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 I is. Think, I, I think I may have done back. like one of those. I I did two or three. You have and... to do a but. There's a ton of them. They never stop, and they they start. They become in. It's so pathetic. Everything they try to say to make the freakers make sense, make them se just make you sound stupid if you know anything about anything. It's like oh. The f we found evidence of berries and like uh, acorns in the freakers scat so that explains why uh, they aren't starving and I'm like there's fucking hundreds of them so um, do you know I that they're, they're the wilderness can't support this many deer so I'm, I'm gonna go uh. ahead and um, do something completely unprecedented Oh, and I do not condone this, but it's something I I'm just going to have to do. I'm going to assume the rest of the game is just the part I absolutely hate and I am lowering my score 1 point. <laughs> oh shit, this thing got a 20. <laughs> okay, I have to cuz cuz here's Casey, the thing. When you uh, brought up the FEMA thing, I thought about oh shit, the rest of that game must just keep bringing that back. That is the worst yep. part of that you, game. The, if it keeps coming back, I don't know. You have know. to do many point, of those missions. And that's... You have to keep doing fucking missions of it. There's that entire subplot where he has to do missions for uh, O'Brien to get information about his uh, dead wife. Yeah. Which, oh my god, they couldn't write that now, dynamic talk... in the least. <laughs> Dan, I'd like you to cede control to me for a little bit, because yeah, I want to go, go over the story. And you I'm gonna... go ahead. Okay. Yeah. First of all, let's talk about Deacon. KZ, what do you think of Deacon Days Gone? Um, he's got a dark past. He lost his wife. He's the most boring nothing dude I've ever experienced in a game in years. What would you say? How do you feel about him as a human being? Uh, I didn't get far enough for him to be like an asshole. He just seems like angry. Growly loner. man. Growly, angry yeah. loner uh, is just over dramatic because I got that cutscene. He's like, my dead wife. That, the part of that bite that she gave me that. Dan. Uh, Deacon Days Gone seems like a poorly written video game character, by the way, if you made it this far. Yeah, we're just saying it because it's fucking funny. The thought that the name of the game is his last name <laughs> and that somehow his last name is Days Hyphen Gone. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deacon St. John, Deacon Days Gone. It, it fucking works. Right? Uh, <laughs> He 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 doesn't have a very strong character, and what character he does have is just bitter asshole. He strikes me as a bizarro dimension version of Cole from the first Infamous, uh, transplanted into uh, The Walking Dead. He his characterization seems a little all over the place, and none of his actions make a ton of sense early on in the game. <laughs> I mean, not. He's like, "Oh man, you're really sick. How about you sit in the forest by yourself in this watchtower? People are mad at us. They could come for you at any moment, but you're gonna sit that here." That seems so fucking bizarre. It's like, <laughs> leave my gun. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> this uh, this game. Let me let me uh, let me explain. And uh, I don't feel bad saying any of this. Every narrative part of this game seems like someone who cannot write trying to do an uncharted level of production for a Walking Dead themed thing. They don't know yeah, how characterization it's like they look works. Look at what other studios they're you know peers with and went. Let's see if we can do that. <laughs> this is how we do it. And, we can hang, and it's bad. It's not okay. Uh. His character is not great. He's bad, but he's also kind of really fucked up in that his his character's all over the place. Like, he's not consistent. You see the dude do a thing and then immediately go, fuck, why did I fucking do that? But, like, <laughs> but like he doesn't realize, he doesn't say the sentence where he identifies that it's him who did it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he acts De like... More like Deacon Day's dope. Right? Like, fucking most characters in a narrative, when they do a thing and... And 
that thing causes things that make them upset, you can tell at some level they regret it. Like Tony Stark, right? Uh, yeah. You can tell that that at some tiny level, they identify they caused some of the problems. But it's like, Deacon, you have just <laughs> solved every problem in the worst way possible. Non-stop for 21 hours. <laughs> now I'm just oh, thinking no. of the girl in the slave camp. And I'm like, Wait, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Where he's just like, oh, fuck, why'd you abuse her? It's like, dude, you brought her to a slave camp. What did you fucking expect? Oh, I want to talk about that for a second, not to get off topic. No, 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 yeah, let's do that. We're gonna go to we're, we're gonna we're gonna have Bob. Yeah. <laughs> they he takes her to the slave camp. Did you get to the part where he takes her to the other camp? Yes. yes. That's like the last thing we did. You fought you find out that uh they forced her to work and she ran away. Yeah. I don't understand yes. what the difference between the slave camp and the nice camp is. Uh one is called slave camp, the other is called nice camp. They will treat her well at nice camp by doing same thing. Yeah. Let's it, go it, to the good Denny's, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> they still like immediately sense. Okay, th that's all I want because like it's just it's just there's no difference. Yeah, they, no, they immediately the, send her off on some tri or like some activating thing where she needs to go out and fight zombies, basically. It's like, what are you doing? She got here. Yeah, yesterday. they sent her on a supply run. Yeah, they sent her on a supply run. Even though she's like in a and in Deacon's bad like, shape. well, why'd you do that? And they're like, everybody's got to work. So how is this camp any different from the farm camp? Because <sighs> they they had her work on site. <laughs> it was actually safer for her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ugh. <sighs> yeah. Bob, no, what it's, do you uh, think of Deacon Days Gone? Um, all those things that were already said. Obviously, like there's no denying that he's. This bizarre, poorly written character. He also comes off as psychotic sometimes, as he just rambles to himself constantly. Yeah, he he seems psychotic, bipolar. Uh, yeah, but but not intentionally. The deacon in cutscenes. The deacon in cutscenes is like a different character from the deacon that responds to the radio. Like when you yes. just hear somebody yes. over the radio. Every time that he's yelling at the radio, that's doing conspiracy theory talk. Is he's literally chasing a black chopper? I yeah, just, by the yeah, way, I can just, we talk about how the plot of this game is InfoWars for a second? Yeah, oh, sure, no. go ahead. The plot is literally FEMA created the zombies, and you walk through the FEMA death camp. Its name pops up on the screen as FEMA death camp. What? <laughs> yeah. I feel like I mean, we hear more shit slung at this game over some of the stuff it does, but no one gets Nobody. Farming. Yeah. <laughs> No, no. Like, it, the people it makes, who get far like they try into to, it are just all in, and that that's just what they love. Mm -hmm. People try to dunk on like every time Crispin Freeman comes on the radio, Deacon shits on him. But like everything he says is the plot of this game. It's like the Doomsday Preppers were right. You can't make fun of Doomsday Preppers in your game where they're right. Yeah, I don't now. None of you guys got to the part where Deacon's character takes a significant turn for the worse. How, how does it, <laughs> okay. He takes many significant turns. He starts yeah. off bad. I think I think the arc really starts when uh, uh at some point you go visit your wife's grave. Did you guys have to do that in your Yeah, time we did like yeah, we did that times. three times in 20 yeah, you keep hours, Deacon. <laughs> you keep having to do it. Anyway, uh he the point where his character really like starts to nerve dive dive starts with him wistfully confessing to his wife's grave how uh, he held a man down while the leader of his gang took a blowtorch to his back and burnt off his biker tattoo and he's like I never told you because I wouldn't I didn't know how you'd react she'd probably leave you you psychotic so wait this is before the apocalypse isn't it yes see oh. like see this is another thing Joel and Day's gone. Basically a piece of shit. I mean, you mean Joel and the Last. In the Last of Us. Oh yeah, <laughs> Joel and the Last of Us. They're so derivative. Please, oh my god! If, please if do not hold up. In please there. do not insult that game. Oh man. You can understand what happened to Joel because you. The game starts with him being a completely normal ass dad. Yes. He gets shot by a government agent and they kill his daughter. Yes. Then like sixteen years pass and you don't. Deacon's Deacon days gone was a piece of shit before the apocalypse and a year has passed. Wait, it's only been a year? Yeah, it's only been it's a year. It's been like 600 oh, it's God, been like it's days. days. Yeah, cuz right. Oh my god. It's been less than 2 years. These aren't equivalent character arcs. 
Deacon is just garbage. Yeah. He was shitty before there was any reason to be shitty. Here's the most unbelievable. I'm, I'm 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 jumping around because it's all jumbled. In my Guys, head. he's not shitty. He's Here's keeping it real. <laughs> Here's the True. most unbelievable moment of the game. Okay. The moment that fucking I had to set the controller down and stare into space in the majesty of what they had written. <laughs> okay. So near the start of the third act, you get a flashback mission where uh. Deacon Day is gone, goes to his wife's work, who is a biochemist, by the way. She works in a biochemistry lab. Yep. Yep. Not gonna have so to do with So he rolls up to the gate. He rolls up to the gate, uh, looking all scruffy, and the security guard's like, fuck off, Drifter, and he, he, he's not even that rude. He's like, go away, thug, or whatever. And Deacon provokes him, and, uh, you know, they back and forth a little bit, and he's like, get the fuck out of here, I'm gonna call the cops. And, uh, Deacon you know, slinks off before his girlfriend comes out. That character survived explicitly so Deacon could find him doing bad things, so Deacon could revenge kill him for being slightly rude to him two years ago. <laughs> this character survived the apocalypse, so you, you the player, and it, it isn't framed this way in the narrative, but I know how, I know how they wrote it. Right. In yeah. their head, you're supposed to think you're getting revenge for this security guard being a dick to Deacon Days Gone. I, um... The level of pettiness broke my fucking brain. I was gonna ask, does this lead directly into the DLC where Claptrap needs to beg for his job back? <laughs> no! <laughs> Allegedly, yes. <laughs> it does seem just that level of, what the fuck is your deal, man? What? Why are you writing this? Oh, by the way, the Rippers, uh, their leader is the guy that uh, Deacon helped burn the back of, and that's why he's crazy. So Deacon basically caused that. Uh, and we're supposed to, like, think he's a, he's a terrifying villain, and I'm like, he wants to kill somebody who did something real horrible to him. Yeah. It's not exactly a villainous trait. Well, he is on meth, because all the Rippers are on meth for yeah, some but, reason. Yeah, but it's like, I, I considering how this dude's rampage would basically be stopped if Deacon was killed, I don't really, I'm not really on Deacon's side. <laughs> fair. <laughs> Absolutely fair. That, the end of the... The end of both the second and the third act is Deacon uses a bomb to kill like a thousand people. Excuse me? <laughs> I'm going to need you what the to walk us <laughs> through that again. Fuck up. Because it's I fiction. You <laughs> made it up. Right? Not this time. Okay, so uh, you do missions for the good camp for Big Mike, who's the only character in this game that isn't a monster. Yeah, the guy who runs the and good Deacon Denny's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Deacon's like uh, corral. let's let's the 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 uh, the freakers sleep in these caves at night. Let's blow up the entrances and seal them in. Okay, that seems reasonable. So, uh you go and get dynamite to do that. You get mining dynamite. Yeah. Then um Deacon's Virgil, who is the uh New Jersey guy, <laughs> the, the uh, white rapper type character who's like, which I think is really funny, that's the rival to the biker, is like a very urban white guy. God. Uh, he I... sells you out to the Rippers. So some shit happens, and Deacon's like, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna fix the Ripper problem, even though Big Mike's like, fucking leave them alone. They, we have a treaty. They say they'll leave us alone. And Deacon's like, no. Anybody who says we shouldn't kill each other is a fucking cock. And then, so he blows up the dam overlooking the Ripper Society. Oh my and god. And drowns them all like fucking rats. So on one I hand, mean, on one hand, they're all meth heads. They're depicted in this video game as basically zombies. Right. That's, which is insane. It's another weird narrative angle with this where it doesn't make a lot well, of the, sense. Because the, they're just You didn't get to the cult you didn't get to the culture of the Rippers, which is they think that the Freakers are the ultimate form of life and strive to be more like them. Yeah, I'd drown them. <laughs> Bob, you? I mean, that does sound dangerous. <laughs> that sounds like the post-apocalypse version of anti-vaxxers. I'm ready but, to blow but up you the run dam. But you run into that girl you saved, and she's a Ripper now. What, what the fuck? How does that... Yeah, that's where her car... That, that's where her character art goes. Why? And, and Deacon talks her down, and she runs off. So these people can, some of them can be talked down, but he just fucking drowns them all. What a game. Did, did you guys get to the enhanced Ripper enemies? No. Because there's like a, there's like a, there's a variant of the Rippers with like a Master Blaster-esque helmet from like from a, 
from Mad Max and they come out with a flamethrower and can take thousands of bullets for some reason. <sighs> they, okay, so the third act, they're like, I, I heard my wife. By the way, his wife's fucking alive. That's of course. That's really hard to see coming Of course, on. yeah. Uh, so he's like, I'm going to go south across the mountains to, uh, to find my wife. By the way, the, the the thing you do, you thing you this is part of the schizophrenia of Deacon Days Gone. The thing you do before killing all the rippers, before effectively causing fucking genocide for this society, is he goes and finds a puppy for boot for a uh, boozer because boozer had to have his arm amputated and he was depressed because he can't ride his motorcycle anymore. Oh yeah. Now he just can't get anywhere because they don't no other way to get around in these in days gone. Well, they moved they they moved to the good camp, which is one of the only moments that I kind of like where Deacon's like, oh, I know I'm a piece of shit, but can you take care of my friend? I'll do whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I, we that's where I thought the character arc was starting to improve. Uh huh. So you ride south and you meet um the militia. You probably heard the, you heard them mentioned on the radio or uh the girl you save talks about them like yeah. they took all the guns in the house nearby. Yeah. I've never seen like a narrative try to tell me some dude is evil while giving me less reason to care. It's like I'm supposed to hate the dude running the militia because he's military man, but he has this giant compound that's well equipped and has like big farm areas and seems relatively secure and is actively researching ways to fight the hordes. But yeah. it's military, so it's bad. That's that's what? some highbrow. Oh, the military boy. is always evil in these stories. So I mean, by the by the way, uh, one of the points they that they say he's evil is he is at one point he says like those who can't fight uh, work on the farm, and I'm like, you mean like the way the other two the two other fucking camps do, and you <laughs> didn't portray those as evil. So so here's <laughs> the thing: this is the main narrative thrust of this game. And I'm curious if you guys uh, also agree. Authority is bad. All of it. All organizations that are big are bad. FEMA's bad. Government's bad. Military's bad. I just wish bad that was, because we say they're bad. I just I wish that was presented in a more effective manner. As and a by narrative. the way, from the start of um, from like the start of the Let's Go Insane arc, where he blows up the dam and kills all those people. mm Hmm. The game just becomes misery porn. Oh, cool. Great. Ugh. Great. Don't have enough of that. Mm, like, no. uh, the way that arc starts is the Rippers attack to get Deacon. They attack the good camp, and there's a literal slaughter. Like, you go into a cabin and kill one Ripper, and there's like eight butchered corpses. Oh, so... And then you ride south, and you join the militia. And it's just like, uh, you meet this really nice doctor character, and he seems pretty cool. He's like a military. He 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 was a doctor in like the barrio in L.A. He gets murdered for no reason to produce drama. Like he gets his throat cut because he's nice. You meet a you meet a really goofy character who you help a you help survive a couple times, and uh, he seems like he's doing okay. He's the one who committed the murder because he got addicted to oxycodone, so he killed the doctor to get more. It's like real life. It's it's so gritty. Um, so gritty and real, and uh, it, and the dude running the militia goes goes insane, seemingly because the plot said he should. Cool. And so Deacon and he attacks the good camp again and kills Big Mike. So Deacon decides, uh, I'm gonna build a truck bomb and blow up the entire militia compound. Whoa. What? <sighs> oh, and by the way, uh, the the. What the fuck is it? the stupid new, the new Joyzy guy? Uh, his his Virgil joins up with the militia explicitly, so do you get a chance to kill him. <sighs> and here's how the game ends: you killed countless people with military training and you know lives. You know humans are kind of rare. It ends with everybody getting together and deciding Deacon is now the leader of the good camp. What? He he is proactive, a go getter, and all. And it's like a positive ending where and it acts like Deacon learned a lesson or grew as a person. <laughs> what what would the lesson be? I don't know. <laughs> it could be anything. <laughs> what do you think they thought the lesson was? I have no idea. He does <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't change as a character. He just gets worse. 
He becomes more he becomes like a violent man child in the last third of this game where anything happens and he throws like a violent temper tantrum. Did does anything happen with the uh the conspiracy theory guy? Does he just stop showing up or no, do you he, go kill him for he, no reason? No, you don't kill him. He's he's just there. He's he's not real. The first two camps aren't relevant to the story at all. Uh, of course. If of course well, it would so, just some drop of the characters him. from some of them care. I think they like form me. If oh god, it's been so long. My memory's blanking. I think they form like an alliance to blow up the militia, and some of them are in the ending. So your wife's alive. Yeah. What happens with that? Uh, he goes to the militia headquarters, and she's researching a way to cure the re the the freakers secretly. Because by the way, she directly worked on the freaker virus. Of course, that's what the that's what it looked like it was headed towards. Yeah, and in how far in is that reveal? Forty hours. Oh, that we was knew that obvious at, five at hours hour. Ahead. Like, like it was super obvious at hour it was like obvious eleven. The government did it the instant you find a fucking power up syringe in the death camp. I mean, it was it was obvious that that's the way the story was gonna go when the story is written like absolute shit. And then you meet your girlfriend and she's like, I'm a biochemist. And it's like, are you fucking, we knew your ass was alive. Now your no. ass is alive and it caused the, the fucking virus. Holy shit. You know what? While I was playing, I was telling Dan, we're going to find his wife. She's going to now be a villain and inject herself with the virus so she can do a cool fight scene No, with she's you. not a villain. Okay. You meet her <laughs> and she's part of the militia and he can't admit they can't admit they're married for some reason so what? that's part of why the villain be the, the militia leader becomes like weird and paranoid because he's convinced that they're conspiring because they keep meeting I don't know why it's never explained why he can't just say yeah that's my wife I rode down here to find her it's, and she's not implied to be like now married to the le militia leader or anything nope. right nope Wh what we're gonna be getting. Comments. Oh, here's another thing. The militia, the militia dude has been. Um, one of his strategies is called slash and burn, where he cuts, to, he clear cuts limber, he cre clear cuts trees for limber, and then burns the environment because freakers won't cross the uh, burnt landscape as easily. They don't like it. Okay. And this is again treated as negative, but I'm like, do you realize that the carbon footprint of humanity is completely gone? It don't matter. Right. I'm like, that seems like a completely reasonable thing to do. In the post-apocalypse. What? <sighs> now, you... I, I, I don't have much more. It's just, he's so bad. But now we have to talk about the uh, the secret movie. Uh -huh. I'm the only person right, who got Before you get it. into the secret movie, by the way, there there is one major aspect of Days Gone that was the major pushing thing for it, where they're going to have large tribes of zombies with uh, good AI. Oh, uh, yeah, those suck. <laughs> Yeah, those suck. I hate them. Here's here's how you beat yeah. them. You run in a big circle and throw explosives behind you. I was I saw people describe it as like, uh, they're a line. <laughs> like it's a, yeah, like they're, it's a they're train just, they're of just zombies a big mob. instead of like a big, you know. Yeah, it looked cool that first time they showed it. That that reveal trailer is such lies. Yep. Yeah, that that's nothing like what it turned out. Now, that reveal the trailer is movie. three years old now. <laughs> Only three? Only you know, three? <laughs> yeah, it was shown in 2016. That was shown when Death Stranding was first revealed. You get to the end of Days and, Gone, and you're like, what are they going to do as a sequel? You know, there's... I can't wait to hear this. You said it's like Watch Kingdom this Heart. video. Watch this video from the timestamp. <sighs> Fucking Jesus! All right, we, we all need to we this all need video, to sync up then. This video will be in the description, so that way people can you can just uh, search watch D it. Days Gone secret ending. I just had to find one where the thumbnail didn't give it away. You, We're uh, five minutes and forty seconds in of this seven minute forty second thing. You want to like count down or something? Sure, just do it. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Mm. 
<laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Now, one, what? <laughs> I I want to say I want to make a statement. That statement is, I think I want this more than the next Kingdom Hearts game. <laughs> like, Just first of the all... the existence of this sequel, what the fuck? <laughs> first of all, if, like, it evolves for them to just have human intelligence, what's the big deal? Yeah, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out like, what the you, ramifications of the this. The strength, like, the speed, because these are, like, 28 days later, like, zombies, right? And okay, like, but they're... They but if, run. Yeah, but if you have... Hu if you have human intelligence, why are they fight? You you wouldn't fight be fighting them. Right. They like, don't need human blood or anything. They made a point that they eat other things. Well, because they're replacing humanity. Yeah, it's like yeah, they'll be like, We are the we are the ultimate life form. You're well they we're going well, to wipe not, you well, out. Good, good thing ninety nine point nine nine percent of humanity turned into these things or died. <laughs> Or turned into these things and then died. Are you trying to tell me that died. this isn't well thought out like every fucking thing else in this? Yeah, I'm like, two, I why are they telling Deacon Day's gone? He's not fucking Blade. <laughs> <laughs> like, what if he was, though? He, he, he has no, what he's if it's not crossing inherent. over like Terminator with gears? Oh, my God. He's not like superhuman. He doesn't have any special trait that would allow him to to fight these things. Secondly, I'm not even sure if they're talking about the super smart freakers or FEMA. Who's coming? Uh, I assumed from that ending that the U.S. government is run by super freakers secretly. Yes. Uh, that is that is what the What if Illuminati were zombies? <laughs> yeah. That's what I... Th it's the, so the stupid. Yes, incredibly stupid. I was really hoping this was going to be the Siphon Filters thing and not that <laughs> I was excited because you said this was gonna be like Kingdom Hearts, and I'm like, no, not at all. But I still really want the sequel to exist now. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just <laughs> can't. Jesus Christ, I can't even. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say before we're done. <laughs> Did, so what happened to his wife? Is his wife dead by the end of the game? No, she's fine. <sighs> okay, that's good. Is it? He good, experiences he he no major things, loss at all. She doesn't even like look down on him, or do they nope. have a moment where it's like, look at all nope, the she... bad things that I did? Oh. Nope. She's like, wow, Deacon, thank God you killed all those people. You really saved the day. You're the leader now. You're the sheriff, Deacon. Gotta love these power fantasies where there's no tangible consequences By the way, for action. Here's how that romance was written. Oh, no. <laughs> here's literally an exchange that happens. Uh, her, she's talking, blah, 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 blah. Magellan was the first explorer. Blah 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 blah, and Deacon and you like sense the smug in his like his voice. He's like, <laughs> Magellan was the first white explorer, and you like hear her ovaries drop. <laughs> it it actually, it's it's really bad. Anytime it tried to develop I'm that romance, yeah, every one of those flashbacks was the one literal the, worst. One of the things he says is like. My gang of thugs and criminals is very diverse. We even have black guys. That's a conversation they have. Deacon's their romance was written. Ro Here's how their romance was written. Deacon St. John treats her like shit because he's a terrible person. He's dismissive to everything she says. 
And then he says something performatively woke. And she goes, aww. And I'm like, no woman was involved in this at all. You blind, you held the her voice actress at gunpoint. Uh-huh. Days Gone is a fantastic game. The only game to get a 20 out of 40 from the spoiler cast Gigaboots Network. Uh, this uh, is in golf rules, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so the worst game we played is Devil May Cry 5. <laughs> I, uh, the narrative is a fucking mess and they should hire better writers for the next game. And uh, honestly, they shouldn't do the next game. But this game sold pretty well, so. Ooh. Yeah. Not the top one of the year, but, you know. I'm trying I don't, to think. I don't see them closing Bend. What is- I'm still not convinced. I, the I'm, development costs on this thing must have been insane for how long it was in development. I'm still just trying to figure out what what was gained by that secret ending. Why would they were just... set? They were getting you hype. I'm I'm hype. I'm hype for our, in five years when we're doing another spoiler cast on Days Gone. I mean, the game will probably be better. Uh, I'm. Not, I liked the gameplay loop. I'm not going to sign up for a Days Gone two spoiler cast until I see Casey has earned the platinum. No. <laughs> You've murdered this whole plan. 